The Chicken Monk, Part 2. This fictionalized story is based on actual personal events. Based on two events, the first portion of the story is from an event in 2019. The second is from an event during my youth. At the end of our visit to the monastery, we were asked to write about our experience, thus inspiring the chicken monk. These stories are dedicated to the monks and the monastery for their beneficial usage. All photography, production, arrangement, narration, recording, editing, and creativity is by Jajimara. Permission to use, display, distribute, copy, reprint, reformat, market, or sell this video and a printed text or digital text or PDF version is hereby granted to the monks and their monastery. This is about a chicken, or mostly the reason why it irritates me when someone else is albeit unintentionally cruel towards one. For the most of the summer, I have been frustrated by a situation that until tonight, the reason escaped my grasp. I'm writing a story in order to clarify my new understanding with hopes of resolving future frustrations and maintain a mind at peace. A while back, we changed the chicken's path to the top of the coop by removing a large doghouse from one side. They were accustomed to hopping onto the doghouse, then jumping to the top of the coop for the night's roost. Since there is a water barrel on the other side, they could fly up on it to reach the top of the coop. Well, there is this one particular rooster whose shortened wings prevent him from flying to the top of the water barrel. So he wanders up to the front porch each night. It's okay, I thought at first. He'll eat all the mosquitoes. Great. Well, my Uncle Bob, who exhibits the beginning stages of Alzheimer's disease, decided to feed the rooster saltine crackers as a treat. The rooster loved them and soon followed him as he walked around the property. Good thing he was not trying to leave a trail to follow back to the house. Since it is my chore to feed the chickens, I am aware of the difference between good feed and bad. Saltines are not on the good list. I asked Bob politely, please don't feed the chickens. It's my responsibility. And then later the same day, noticing his continued behavior, I reminded him more sternly, don't feed the chicken. Saltines and breadcrumbs are not good for him. They do not contain any nutrition he will get full, then he won't eat the bugs and might even die. The next day, it was the same story, so I placed a sign above the cracker supply. It is a drawing of a chicken that states, Do not feed the chickens. Crackers are bad. The very next day, Bob feeds the chicken salty corn chips. Then I warned, people food is bad for the chickens. They get full, won't eat the bugs, and could die. The banter continued over the summer with me silently shaking my head in frustration because no matter how I tried to communicate with him, a day later he has no idea the topic was ever discussed. The sign was still there. However, he continued his desire to feed the rooster with crackers of love. I imagined it must be a rebellion to my nagging. Frustratingly, I vowed to refrain from countering the rebellion with anger. Then, when the cracker supply was exhausted, his new treat became any kind of bread or cookie he could find. I became incensed in irritation. I wanted to scream. I went to my room without supper. So there, how's that grab you? I sat on my bed, head in hands. Why? Why does this bother me so much? It's his chicken. He can stomp it and cook it for dinner if he wants. Sure, the dang old thing is crippled, and all the other chickens beat him up if he tries to eat with them. He was an outsider of the coop. It's no place for him now, and he's not strong enough to defend himself. I had tried tying him to the coop to feed him, but the other roosters attacked him at first chance. 
I also put up a ladder so he could roost on the top of the coop. But with coyotes and other wild animals around, the ladder endangered the whole flock. It's just a stupid chicken. Why do I even care? That's when the chicken monk hit my mind. Oh my gosh. Really? Wow. Man, I forgot all about that until now. That's why. Now I know I am not a senseless blubbering chicken lover. I eat them all the time. Heck, they're better than frog legs any day. Pull yourself together, man, now you know. So what you gonna do about it, I ask myself. I know now. Relax. Ease your mind and quit worrying about it. I told myself, it's not your chicken, and if it makes my uncle happy for just a little while each day, so what? We won't eat that chicken even if he ran the car tire over it. It's just one chicken and we have a whole flock of them in the coop. But at least now I know why seeing that chicken fed improperly aggravates me. It's the chicken monk. When I was a young boy of Catholic faith, my service included participation as an altar boy. One of the perks of training was a week's stay at the monastery near Atlanta, Georgia. It is one of the most wonderful places visited within my lifetime. The church was so beautiful, made with white marble or granite and stained glass windows that seemed to bathe the interior with a beautiful blue hue during the day. We trainees spent most of our day studying Latin and learning the methods of altar service. Then in the afternoon, we were free to explore the grounds and meet the people who lived there. Those monks were farmers, bakers, brick masons, architects, and engineers. They were so much more than just a bunch of guys who sat around lighting candles and praying all day. Some were doctors, therapists, counselors, and teachers. I was amazed at the variety of skills and education those people had attained. One afternoon, I discovered a pond down the hill below the gift shop that had ducks and geese. There was a large aviary pen near the pond with chickens, doves, peacocks, and all kinds of other birds. Picnic tables were scattered about on a hill and benches lined the shore. It was a wonderful place to relax and enjoy nature. A sign near the water advised visitors, please do not feed the waterfowl crackers or bread. Bird feed can be found at the gift shop. Well, being the smartest kid in the world, I knew the sign had to be the dumbest of any I have ever read. Everyone knows birds love crackers and breadcrumbs. I wasn't going to fall for the old buy the stuff at the gift shop gag. I'll just share some of these snack crackers I brought for myself. No way it could harm them. When I did, those birds gobbled them up like a kid eating candy on Halloween. No harm, no foul. The next afternoon, I was back at the pond with another pocket full of crackers, peanuts, and a Coke. I put the nuts in my Coke and shared the crackers with the ducks. Then, just after I skimmed a cracker to a goose, a monk appeared and said, What are you feeding the ducks? I stammered, Peanuts. To which he replied, No, you lied. I saw you toss a cracker to them. Can you read the sign, he asked. Sure, I said, but everybody knows birds love crackers and breadcrumbs. That's the stupidest sign I ever read, I told him. There's even a story about a couple of kids leaving a trail of them that disappeared in a bird's beaks. Incensed in irritation is how I would describe this guy's expression. He snatched me by the arm and began pushing me toward the aviary. I'm not going to hurt you, but you need to do some learning. On the way, he explained that crackers and breadcrumbs hurt the birds, and I will totally understand that by the end of this lesson. My reprimand for deceitfully lying and disobeying the sign's requirements I learned in staying three days in the aviary pen. I would be fed only bread, crackers, and water. My weight would be measured each morning. If I gained any weight, I would be allowed to return to my dorm room and resume my training activities. Otherwise, I would remain. Then he put me in a pen next to the aviary and latched the door. Because I was an outdoor kind of kid who loved campouts, the first evening was kind of enjoyable. Heck, this was great compared to the places I normally slept in the woods. 
The sunset was spectacular on the glimmering surface of the pond water, the cooing of the doves relaxing and peaceful. The area of my confinement was basically a chain link fence pen with a roof and a floor. It was equipped with a sleeping bag cot and a small lantern. It actually had a sink with water and a cabinet full of books. This was the Taj Mahal of camping, luxury's finest. I woke with the sunrise and the clucking of chickens. There was a lunchbox over by the door. I opened it and found some fresh baked bread and some type of flat crackers. I poured a cup of water and began enjoying the meal. The monk was feeding the chickens and birds at the other end of the aviary. He said, good morning. I hope you had a restful sleep. We will check your weight as soon as I'm finished here. Soon after he came over and asked me to stand on the scale. 123 pounds, he said. That's two pounds less than 125. We will check this afternoon for any difference. He said, you may find the books in the cabinet interesting. Sometimes I stay here to study and relax while chirping birds soothe me. Then he said, have a fun day, as he wandered back up the hill. I spent the day watching the ducks and geese and the other birds preening their feathers and nibbling on seeds and insects. Most of the books were about birds. I now know that eagles mate during a 60 mile per hour dive in the sky. Toward the evening, the monk returned to visit. My weight was the same, so we discussed the reason for my confinement and prayed together for the safety and health of all God's creatures. I apologized to the monk for lying and disregarding the sign's requirement, but I still wondered why bread and crackers are considered by most to be food for birds. He said, you do have a point, but a long time ago, most people thought the earth was flat. Sometimes the truth is different than reality. I am the caretaker of the fowl at this monastery, he said. I have studied the needs of these birds to the point of professionalism. I can even teach college students based on my education and knowledge qualifications. People who are well educated in the knowledge of birds are called ornithologists. I breed and feed the chickens and we all eat the eggs for breakfast and some of the chickens at dinner time. I also care for all the birds and waterfowl that visit this place. My education allows me to appreciate the nature of these birds created by God above. It is because of their beauty and ability to fly that I know God is the creator of all things. That's why I dedicated my life to serve him through sacrifice and devotion and became a monk. This place allows me to use my knowledge as a caretaker to the flocks of birds while belonging to a flock of monks devoted to Jesus and his teachings. It took me a while to soak this into my young brain, still trying to understand what any of this had to do with the cracker. But the more he spoke, my appreciation for the birds grew while I more clearly understood the difference between candy and mashed potatoes. He explained that birds love to eat crackers and bread. However, they contain no nutritional protein, only carbohydrates that metabolize into simple sugar. They will gobble it up, get full, and then will not eat anything else to keep their body strong. They will eventually die of starvation from nutrition. Well, if I'd have known all of that, I surely would not have shared my crackers with the ducks and the geese. You know, I asked the monk, if the sign taught people, there would be no issue of incorrect feeding. Shouldn't the sign be more educational? He said, I made that sign simple and to the point. It is a rule or commandment to people. But then you simply ignored it and acted according to common belief. Would you have taken the time to read a more lengthy explanation? Sure, I said, especially if it explained why crackers and bread are harmful. How else are people ever going to learn the earth is not flat like a cracker? Okay, then I will make a new sign explaining how it harms the birds and maybe my worries will end, he declared. When he thanked me for my insight, I thanked him for taking time to teach me and for being a great caretaker of the birds. 
He said I could return to my dorm and my training activities on the condition that I share my new knowledge and educate the rest of my group. I agreed and was released, but before returning to the dorm, we went to the water and fed the ducks and geese a bucket of feed. I visited the monastery several times later in life when I felt troubled beyond my own reasoning. There I found solace, contentment, and a solution to some woes. My favorite part of each visit involved ducks, geese, a bucket of feed, a bench by the water, and a sign that reads, For their health, ducks and geese need to eat plants, seeds, and insects. When they eat bread and cracker crumbs, they get full, and then they won't eat good nutritional food. Eventually, they could die from improper nutrition. Breads digest into simple sugars. The birds need protein to make their feathers and bones strong. Nutritional bird feed is provided at the gift shop. Please help us protect them. Before I leave, I pray that all visitors share their new knowledge. The End and New Beginnings of The Chicken Monk, Part 2.